And what we want is we want to hold on to that beautiful awareness of how we move through the world. We don't want to become some narcissistic, self-involved, power-hungry type of leader. That could never be true for women like us. But what we long for is to own some more self-assuredness, to be able to feel calm and comfortable in our own skin, even in our busy position. We want to know that we're on track. We want to feel like we're in command, right? That we're, we've got ourselves, we know who we are, we make solid decisions, we don't second guess ourselves. That's what we want, right? We want to feel confident. We want to feel self-empowered. We want to feel like we are driving our own bus. That's what complete confidence would give us. Not, you know, steamrolling other people, not taking into account the people that we work for, work with. We still keep our beautiful people skills, but we want to drop the doubt and the hesitation and the sort of driving with your foot on the brake. That, that experience that I talk about where we hold ourselves back. Can I get a hell yes if that's a hell yes for you? What I want to reassure you is it's totally possible. You can learn this. You can learn how to manifest that type of confidence. You've got the desire. You're gaining on the clarity. I'm teaching you how to take action and I'm offering you support. I believe those are the four elements that we need to really have transformation, to really um, gain on this skill that no one's taught us, right? Nobody teaches leadership confidence. Few people even teach leadership capability. But if you have the desire, if you gain the clarity on yourself and, your, uh, and others and the tools that you need to use, if you start taking powerful action and you have support, you're on your way. And that's what this group is all about. We're talking about confident leadership and how you find it. So today I have for you two concepts and three tactics, very simple for you to start gaining on your own completely confident leader within. Are you ready? Shall we get started? The first tactic is something that I call your hero leader. I'd like you to take a moment to consider your hero leader. This could be a real life mentor in your, in your experience, somebody that you have now or that you remember from the past. It could be somebody that you've admired, like uh, a boss or a principal or uh, a leader of some company, somebody that you may know personally or maybe even that you don't know it could even be a historical figure that you admire some leader that you have this sense that yeah that's my hero leader it could be a famous figure it could be an artist an activist it can be somebody that you resonate with their brand of leadership it could be a trailblazer it could be a politician it can be an ambassador it can be a orator like a very um compelling public speaker. So this concept, when, we, when we're when we doing this workshop, right, we're making it interactive so, so that you can really bring the lessons in, not just passively listening, but really engaging with the content so that you can have a transformation, even in a one-way broadcast like this, because you applied yourself to the query or the inquiry and started to put your thoughts into the mix. So if you're joining me, why don't you type in the comments below, what are the characteristics of that hero leader that you so admire? It could be maybe their competence or their knowledge or their resourcefulness or their calm under pressure. There are all different kinds of leaders too, right? It doesn't necessarily need to be somebody who was famous. It could be a grandparent or a coach or a teacher that you had in your life. Somebody who touched you with the way that they held themselves or how they made you feel. You can tell us, you can type who that person is to you. You can say it was my grandma or, you know, it's Napoleon. <laughs> 
<laughs> a famous figure or a politician or um, you know somebody that you admire or a boss but what we really want to know or what are the qualities and characteristics that really resonate for you in that person are they outspoken and dynamic are they really mag magnetic and compelling are they you know inspirational are they um, very easy to relate with are they somebody maybe who's humorous, disarming, somebody who makes you laugh, somebody who makes you feel warm? Or on the opposite spectrum, they could be somebody who's maybe very cool and calm, somebody who's very measured, somebody who's very rational or analytical or thoughtful. What are the qualities that you admire in this icon that you're thinking about? Why do you respect them? What do you see? I'd love you to post that in the comments so that we can relate to you and what you're experiencing. For me, I like to think of a leader, maybe not even a, an exact person in mind, but the qualities that I most admire is somebody who's very generous and open and humble, somebody who's capable of admitting a mistake or changing course when there's better information somebody who's adaptable, somebody who's kind and cares about her people, somebody who is um, not defensive or um, afraid to share information, somebody who doesn't hoard power, somebody who's not a micromanager, right? This is the way that you can think about this, the type of characteristics that are meaningful for you. You could write a whole list that could fill a page of what those characteristics are. Um, I like somebody who can laugh at herself, somebody who um, doesn't think she knows all the answers. I think it's fine if she says she doesn't know and that she's willing to rely on other members in her team for their expertise. I really like that sort of vulnerability in a leader. So if I were writing my list, that would be all the things that would be on my list of a hero leader, somebody that I really admire. So I want to explain why I'm taking you through this lesson and why it's so important for you to really come into clarity about those characteristics that you so admire. Are you ready? This is the learning moment. Those qualities that you admire are who you are becoming. Boom. You could not name those qualities, you could not clearly resonate with them and admire them and see them and feel their impact and understand them if they weren't nascent inside you, if they weren't, if you weren't understanding that language as if you could speak it. You can't understand a language that you don't speak. So the language of your hero leader is your language. I like to say, if you spot it, you got it. If it's something you admire in someone else, you're actually projecting externally those qualities that you know are important to you and that you have. Isn't that beautiful? You might want to fight with me in this moment and think, no, I chose somebody who's very opposite of me. I chose somebody who I think is really confident and really capable and really good public speaker and I'm none of those things. But... I still would maintain that you would not even resonate with that brand of leadership if it didn't already mean something to you and how you're wired and what matters to you. I sometimes use this as an example, like even in sci-fi movies when we talk about aliens, like in the plot where there's like this outer space creature that comes to planet Earth, what do they look like? They all kind of look like a human just kind of like a uh, an alien human, like a, the way a person would imagine an alien would look like with two legs and a head and dots for eyes, right? Because we we project the image of who we are, even when we're thinking of something completely other, we can't think of it as like a blob or um, a temperature or um, a quality of light. Like we don't see aliens in movies that way. They're all walking, talking um, mini humans, right? So that's sort of a funny demonstration of how 
it's just a small degree apart from who we are. That woman that we admire is really inside of us already. And I can teach you how to bring that to life, how to bring her forward. Let's put that over here on the, on the side for now. The women that you admire as leaders that have the same qualities that you long to manifest, the real masterful women are self-aware. They're connected to themselves. That authenticity that reads to you, that when somebody really touches you or inspires you, it's because they're connected to themselves in a way that allows for them to then also connect externally with other people. That's authenticity. That's being readable. That's being real. So this is this concept of being whole, not trying to like pull yourself together and into a polished, perfect version of something. It's actually peeling off the layers that are hiding your true way of being. It's letting your authenticity shine through, not trying to change who you are because you admire some other version of leadership. Does this make sense? This concept of the inner icon isn't a different person than you. It's a version of what you have inside of you that just needs to emerge. It's not perfection. It's not even um, something better than who you are. It's more of who you are. So stay with me here. Let's say you feel like you flub things up and you feel imperfect and you feel embarrassed of not knowing everything and you don't feel fully in command or even like a real adult. Like you feel intimidated or you feel smaller or lesser than or that picture I showed you on day one of the imposter syndrome that you feel like your expertise is not big. You feel like you just have this small toehold. Your brand of your inner leader is the woman who actually can own what she knows and what she doesn't know. She can admit mistakes. She can be humble. She can be calm. She can share the stage and share credit. She can ask for help and ask for forgiveness. She can collaborate. This is how if you shift gears from not trying to be perfect and trying to be error free and trying to be, you know, this this unfallible version of you and you actually find that you can just be you, it's so freeing. This allows you to be in a growth mindset always, always growing, always developing, always being better than yesterday, not out of strife and struggle and trying to shape shift and make yourself look like perfect, not polished, not finished, but growing. And that gives you a break. That allows you to feel more relaxed and more calm and more self-command, more comfortable. That allows you to be you. See, life isn't fixed, right? There's not this chessboard where all of the potential moves can be played out. Our moves are not scripted out like that. We have to just come into our own and be capable of adapting from where we are with whatever life brings to us from being who we are. That's confidence. It's relying on our strengths, relying on our skills, relying on our experience and our wits and our past in information and our wisdom and knowing that that's enough to guide us. Now, a lot of us have never received good leadership training. So if you're just scurrying based on your wits with no baseline for how to do certain things, that can be really stressful, but you can still find that authentic way of being you that will give you such relief. Is that resonating for you? This is being whole. This is free. This is exciting and relief giving and amazing. It's not you acting like a leader and trying to be something, it's you letting yourself emerge. Okay, so I want to take a moment right here and say that if you don't feel like you have leadership qualities or you don't really feel confident in that the way that you are, 
I get a lot of women that join my program who might be more introverted or don't really rely on their interpersonal gifts because they don't feel that in command of being able to manage others or resolve conflict. Sometimes women are quieter, they're not as verbal, or they're more analytical, or they're not confident public speakers, they're not warm connectors. That doesn't mean you can't be a leader, right? That might be the archetype that you think is a leader, but if you, whoever you are in your own skin can be an absolutely effective leader in your life, both personally, just leading yourself and in your network. Okay, so I wanna know how does that resonate for you? Is that encouraging for you to hear? Do you feel emboldened to know that? Do you believe that it's true? I know it's true because there are all different kinds of leaders out there in the world. There's not one archetype that you can put up on a pedestal and say, but she's everything that I'm not, so how could I be anything but smaller and lesser than? That's just leading us to our next concept, okay? What has, what, what there's a tendency that happens that when we start to lean into our bigness, when we start to feel the uh, expansiveness of what we could be, when we really start daring to feel our greatness, what happens? Self-doubt chirps in, fear arises. We start to think, yeah, but ah, that makes me uncomfortable. I'm not... Uh, that's out of my comfort zone and if I dare to be that and I fail then there's pain right this is normal what happens when we stretch to believe in the bigness of who we could be when we're like pushing on our outer boundary when we're in our growth mindset and we're really pushing on our outer limits there's a term this is the second concept I'm sharing with you today of what happens it's a very human experience it's not unique to you or to me it's called self-sabotage we have inside of us inside of our head this concept that is called a saboteur it's a term for that negative inner voice the inner critic it's a term for that part of us that keeps us back, that holds us back, that keeps us small and safe. And it's like when you're thinking of doing something big and bold, like if somebody would double dare you to do something like quit your job and start your own company or tell the boss that that's, you know, that you're, you're out of here and give your two weeks notice. Like if you dare to do something bold, your saboteur would be activated to be like, uh, 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 uh that doesn't feel so safe. The saboteur can sound like not so fast or who do you think you are, right? Sometimes our saboteurs are really negative inside of our, our mind. You can't do that. It'll never work. You tried that once before. Don't bother. And sometimes a saboteur can actually really be quite abusive and even get into, um, you know, like abusive self-talk, toxic self-talk, like you suck, you're a failure, I told you so, no one likes you, right? This is hard, but I'm naming it because I have so many women tell me that that's what their inner critic will feed them. So in a moment like this, you could ask, why would we do this to ourselves? What's the purpose of having a saboteur? Why would we have this experience? And I'll explain it to you because once you understand how, it, how this arose, it'll help you combat the negative toxicity that it feeds you. Okay, so the reason why we have a saboteur is it's a natural part of our evolution. It's a natural part of how our ego developed. Like it's a learning loop result. It's like cause and effect when we were little. It helped us, having a saboteur helped us ex establish at a very young age, safety. It helped us learn if we did something positive, 
we would get a good result. Like if we pleased our mother by eating everything in the bowl, she would pat us on the head and say nice things in a happy tone. But if we threw the bowl and broke the bowl, she would say no and she would punish us and she would make us feel bad for, for doing that wrong thing. No shaming our moms. It's just human, right? It's like being socialized had us put ourselves into a box and be told what was good and what was not good. This is how our inner imposter syndrome also grew. From a very young age, we learned to go towards the positive and move away from the negative. We want to get good results and avoid pain and negative results. We want to avoid criticism. We want to avoid being ostracized, right? We want to fit in. We want to be pleasing. We want to succeed. So it was a safety mechanism that we adopted from the adults in our lives that wanted us to stay safe. Right? This comes from, you know, the messages came from people that had influence in our lives, from our, our parents or grandparents or teachers and coaches like the wider network, sometimes religious um figures or authority figures in our life that they reinforced that being a certain way would make us safe and it learned how we knew who we are. So we got a very strong attachment to avoiding pain so that we could be included. It's human. So your saboteur, let's just summarize this, your saboteur arose, its roots arose from when we were kids, when we were girls, it allowed for our achievement and our thriving or our protection, and it reinforced being a certain way, right? That's how we developed our self-concept. It gave us a self-concept, it gave us an identity. It actually started to teach us about being a high performer to get praise, right? So the saboteur is literally here for one reason only. Are you ready? Are you tracking? It's to keep you safe. Our saboteur is there to hold us back from pain, even emotional pain. So originally, it was something that arose from like, you ran down the steps and tumbled and fell and hurt yourself. So you learned, don't do that. <laughs> or you touched a hot stove and you learned, oop, don't do that. That was a learning loop, right? But the saboteur became distorted over time and taught you that if you did something socially unacceptable on the playground, you could be ostracized and left out and not one of the cool kids. It taught you to avoid the pain of being emotionally exposed. And we learned that we really wanted to avoid that pain. So the saboteur warned us against things that we don't actually need anymore, right? You're an adult now, and now it's our job to decide for ourselves what our limits are and not have this very old part of our conditioning run the show. We don't need our saboteur that way anymore. We're safe crossing a street. We can read the energy of strangers, right? We're capable of making very challenging, distinguished decisions on our own. It's our job as adults to be aware of what messages we're even feeding ourselves and deciding if they're what we really want to keep believing and using as our operating system. That's what I want to teach you, this concept of the saboteur. Now, it might feel really unfamiliar or uncomfortable or like not habitual to talk this way about like your inner self-talk or having this sabotaging version of you that holds yourself back. That's okay. We're here just to be growing our awareness so that we are deepening our capability of self-awareness and self-management. Okay, so now you've got two really powerful constructs that we've learned about tonight. Your inner icon, the version of you that is big and great and that resonates with, with examples of that in your world, and the inner saboteur, the critic that developed from when we were little to keep us safe. One of the tactics that you learned was about finding your hero and now I want to give you two tactics for how to deal with your saboteur. So you don't have to live with this negative self-talk running wild in your head. You can manage it. 
And the first way, do you remember this from uh, previous trainings? I like to say, name it to tame it. If you can personify your saboteur and see it as just a small little part of your brain, it's not you, it's a piece of you. It's not your whole self-concept, it's this little doubter inside of you. And if you can peel that apart from your sense of identity and just see that as like a little version, a little player in your play, if you can personify it as something small and even sort of pathetic, something scared, something that's like sweet that you can love on, then you're starting to gain mastery over this thing that has had mastery over you. So I like to think of it as like a little cretin or a little gremlin or like a little garden gnome, um, some slimy thing, like a quality that's like green and sticky and smelly and icky, you know, like uh, you can name it. I've had women in workshops before call it like the weenie genie or the little devil or the slimy soul or um you know, whatever it is that works for you, that, that gives you a sense of um, lording over it. Like it's a small little part of you. It's just a little doubter. It's just a little beater. And you can feel lovingly pathetic towards it. It fits in the palm of my hand. It's just a very small little piece. It's not the whole me, right? That's a tactic that you can use that I know some women, once I introduce this, they use it all the time. They're like, oh, there she is again. And that's tactic number two for how to deal with your saboteur is talk to it, talk it down. I like to say the same four words to it all the time. Thank you for sharing and not today. Thank you for sharing, but I don't need you now. You were here to keep me small and safe. Don't need you today. Thank you. I, I even have that sing song quality about it, right? Like it's small, it's lovable. It's just a little pest. It's not controlling me. I'm in charge of it. Your inner saboteur cannot survive humor, it dissolves, kindness, it disappears, or curiosity, like, hmm, I wonder why it's saying that. I'm not going to let it drive, I'm just going to see what it has to say. Just a silly little thing, trying to keep you safe. From what? I'm a big girl, I got me now, right? Don't make me flick you. <laughs> That's one level further that you can think about. Like, let's say your, your little saboteur is like the devil on your shoulder that you can flick. Like, hey, hang on, sit down, shut up. Not today, right? Don't need you anymore. Don't make me flick you, you small, pathetic little gremlin creature, you. And on the other shoulder, who is she? Who's on this side? It's your inner icon. It's your boss lady. It's the woman that you admire and aspire to be. Have her be louder than it. Have her speak to it. Now, that might sound like just crazy talk, like you're walking around in the world, manifesting voices in your head and speaking to yourself. But girl, can we just be serious? Like, it's already happening. You know that your saboteur is talking to you all day, every day, so you might as well engage it in a more productive conversation, right? You might as well actually have mastery over the dialogue rather than letting it run your mood and, and tear you down. This actually can work, crazy as it seems. I'd love to hear your comments in the, in the chat below. Do you, um, can you imagine talking to your saboteur and what would you say to her? Okay, so your goal, this whole training, let's sum it up, is to find the more compassionate, kind, encouraging, and patient part of yourself to address that negative Nancy inside of you, even just a little bit more today than you did yesterday, to counteract the embedded negative self-talk that is there. It takes a little while to erode something that's that powerful and set from a young age. But you can absolutely grow from wherever you are to have a more positive self-concept where your inner icon is bigger, louder, and more powerful than your inner saboteur. Okay, so let's sum up. Today, in this short time, what you've learned were two key concepts, the inner icon and the saboteur, and three tactics, like channeling your hero leader, naming your inner saboteur, name it to tame it, 
and then learning how to talk to it to break down its hold on you. When you are encouraged, when you know that you can channel the bigger version of you and you don't judge yourself for still learning a lesson like this, then you're making headway. So be patient with yourself. Above all, in this training, these three days, I've been teaching you about being more self-aware, more self-managed, but most of all, self-loved. Those are the keys for you to actually establish the foundation that you long for as a confident leader. It starts within. So as we're coming to a close, I'd love to see in the comments, what was your biggest aha moment, either from today's class or these three days together? Bring it on. Let us know, like, what stirred you? What do you want to own that you're just beginning to believe? Like, what would be the most powerful thing if it was set in concrete for you, if you actually were really able to adopt this lesson? I'd love to see your comments in the, in the chat below. And that is the end of our formal training, ladies. But stay tuned because I did mention that at the very end, I'm going to announce a, something special. I wanted to say that in this transition, let's say we finished these three days of me broadcasting training, teaching you concepts and giving you some tactical skills for how to adopt new practices or new ways, new perspectives, new tools. Let's say you're really, you're encouraged by them and you feel resonant with the lessons, like they make sense to you and you feel like, yeah, that's so me. You're inspired, but there's still doubt, right? Let's be honest. You're not going to listen to three days of training like this and have everything just evaporate magically and suddenly feel fixed and cured from things like self-doubt or imposter syndrome, people-pleasing perfectionism, right? The inner negative critic. It takes time for these lessons to shift your reality. But I know that you absolutely can shift that reality. This goes to the special announcement that I'm going to mention in a little bit, so stay tuned. With time, practice, and individualized attention. The reason why I do what I do is because I don't think people are actually training this type of emotional management, this type of emotional intelligence as the basis of leadership. I think a lot of people aren't even teaching leadership. People are getting promoted into high level positions because they were really good at what they did, because they're high achieving and high performing, because they're impressive women, but they're not given skills or tactics or training to operate at this new high level. And then all of our coping strategies seem to be falling short and we start to get down on ourselves. That's when the self doubt creeps in, right? And we just start overworking. What you need, what you always needed, was some mentoring and some coaching and some learning and some practice and some personalized attention to implement lessons so that you could operate at these high levels that you're just doing based on your wits. That's why you found me. That's why you're in this training, right? Is you wanted some skills. So now I'm going to explain how you can take lessons like this and really embed the learning inside of you to really own the lessons, to really embody this confidence, not just to listen to it, be inspired by it and think that it makes sense, but to operate in this way. It does take some time to know exactly who you are and how you roll how you're already a success, how you're already enough. It might take some personalized coaching to see that and to drop some of the unproductive behaviors and beliefs that you're holding on to. It takes a little time. So this is how my whole program works, right? It's called Completely Confident Leadership, which might sound like, what? Completely confident? That seems very aspirational. Who's ever completely confident? What I mean by complete is that two halves make a whole, that you start with your personal self-awareness, self-mastery, self-appreciation, self-love, your emotional 
insides, your personal competence, and then you blend that with relationship competence, with your leadership skills, with your ability to inspire others, resolve conflict, give direct feedback, motivate people, speak authoritatively and publicly, that the external and the internal meet to make a whole. That's what my Completely Confident Leadership Program is all about. Women who join love the fact that they get instant access to my membership area with all of my leadership training modules and they have that for life. I just added a new one actually last week and as I grow, as I articulate new challenges for women that work with me, I create new modules and they're always there. So as I grow and as you grow, the program grows. That's the first piece is the membership area. The second piece is the group coaching that once a week you you come into a small group format to be in community and to land the lesson. We do one lesson a week and then get coached on it. We break things into digestible short segments so that we can implement the learning and actually level up using new skills. So many women tell me that one of the best benefits of the entire program is that hour a week that they get to spend with other women that inspire them, that make them feel seen and acknowledged, that uplift them. The community itself is like none other. There are wonderfully spirited, self-aware, talented leadership women who are also learning these lessons that mentor you just by being part of the group. The whole point though is for a coaching call for you to work on what you're working on, implementing something that you find challenging, trying out a new lesson, getting feedback, getting personalized coaching and community support. That's the second piece. We start with the third piece that I'm going to describe with a deep dive leadership lesson that um, that is like an assessment that perhaps you've never seen before. It's not DISC, it's not Myers-Briggs, it's not Enneagram. It's something that actually combines elements of all of those into a pictogram that shows you all of your leadership capabilities and how they interplay. It's like a, a visual that shows you who you are, who your magnificent strengths are in the world, and it serves as a map for how you can go forward. This is how we begin, and this is actually how you find your inner icon. I, when, when I kick off with this, it allows me to really know each individual woman as on a personal level so that I know how what her operating system is. And when she gets those results debriefed for her, it gives us that connection to be able to navigate the entire course knowing how she's going to achieve results. All of this happens in a private Facebook community where we support each other, where we sometimes, you know, um, get feedback from the hive mind when we're going through a difficult circumstance. It's very isolating to be a leader at a certain level and not have a network or a community where you feel like you can be completely transparent and share in a private way that is um, confidential. So that's a huge benefit. And the result is that you grow in your self-assured confidence, your knowledge of yourself, your appreciation of yourself. The exercises that you do become things that you own, that are embedded inside of you, that make you feel confident and clear. So before I go much further, I want to tell you the way that you apply is that you actually get on my calendar via this website, joeleader.com forward slash apply. It shows the entire program, but really at the top, just look for a little button that says book a call to start now. All of the women in the program pass through that filter to make sure it's a good fit for you. I want to make sure that we are reading each other, that I can help you and that you're in the right space to be part of this community. Um, it's only me and it's a very small group. I only onboard four or five women every single cohort. So I need you to find time on my calendar and I motivate you to do it this weekend so that um, when I have time in my calendar, we can actually make forward headway. So go to joeleader.com slash apply, find time on my calendar, and then we can talk about all the details. There are some bonuses. I'm going to explain two bonuses that I have developed over time, and then two bonuses if you book a call by Sunday. You ready? 
Okay, one bonus that I've realized over time is that many women inside my network are very nervous about speaking publicly. They really struggle with holding a stage, with having everyone all eyes on them, and with delivering a speech. And I'm a public speaking coach, so it made total sense for me to put a public speaking workshop inside of our group. And so quarterly, I offer a special workshop inside the group. And so when you register for Completely Confident Leadership, you get admission to be part of that workshop. That's one special bonus that helps you up level a super important skill. And then the second bonus that I've discovered is this really cool walkie-talkie um, function called Voxer that is something you download on your phone. It's free and it allows for you to, as a walkie-talkie, to voice or message text me anytime. And it allows for me to be a coach in your pocket, as they say, for when you're actually struggling with implementing a lesson or having a difficult circumstance or just wanting to have a celebration party. Partner, somebody that you want to tell that you know you won, you got the raise, you did the promotion, you nailed the speech, you had success. A huge bonus I have found is that in between these weekly coaching calls, life happens. And that's when you need a coach, right? That's when the lessons can really take hold. So when I introduced this voice and message walkie-talkie option, I found that my clients were just getting such quantum leap results that I've now included it as a special benefit as the program. It's another bonus that you get with a program. All right, now the, if you book a call with me before the end of this weekend, these are two extra bonuses that I'm providing. One I've already told you about, it's $500 off the program. We'll talk about price in a minute. But you have to book a call with me before Sunday night on www.joeleader.com slash apply. The other is this. So, you know, we're talking about mastering our internal environment. And you know I have this private group with, that's got a lot of good juju in it. I actually bring special speakers in from time to time with different modalities. And recently I had my own clinical hypnotherapist come join our program. Yes, I've tried hypnotherapy before to embed better beliefs. And she did this really cool um program where she did a I am enough hypnosis that she created into a recording that my clients now listen to for up to three weeks in a row every night and they see amazing shifts in how they're able to reprogram their subconscious beliefs. What a cool thing, right? They all say the same thing that it's like it's just slowly eroding bad beliefs and they just feel better. Every single woman that I've had use this better beliefs hypnosis has said to me, I just feel more confident. I don't, I can't explain it. It's just, it's a very gentle way of helping you gain more confidence and mastery in your life. So it's a super duper bonus. This is the one that I was mentioning at the beginning that I decided that I'd like to include. If you book a call with me before Sunday night, I'm going to give you a link for you to download this special um, recording that this clinical hypnotherapist did just for our group called I Am Enough. It's a huge benefit. I, I, get, I spend quite a lot to invite these um, special speakers into my group, but I'm going to offer this for free to you if you book a call with me before Sunday night. It's pretty cool, huh? So these are all the different ways that we come at your leadership confidence, all the different ways that we up level ourselves from our spiritual side, from our internal emotional side, and from our leadership capability side, like learning public speaking or learning how to resolve conflict or give effective feedback or hold our own with boundaries. Or There's so many skills that are all part of this four month program. Okay. I haven't even talked about price yet, but I would like to say that for any woman who decides that this is something for her and she's a good fit for the program, we always find a way. If I am doing this special leadership segment for a corporate client, it costs five to $5,500 to $6,000 per client when I'm doing this inside for a corporate client. When I do it for me, when I do it just for our small group community, it is half off of that price. And what I'm telling you is this weekend, if you book a call with me before Sunday, you can get an additional $500 off, the half off 
I want to make it super juicy because it's important to me when I come live like this to be able to set a cohort to get you all sorted in your groups and then we go and do the work. And then some, somehow later down the line, when I have space, I'll do another workshop. But it's important to me to be able to onboard women in a collective, and it's worth it to me to offer that discount. So that's what I have for you. Everything can be found in this link of joeleader.com forward slash apply. If it sounds resonant for you, if you're like, gosh, I think I really need a leadership workshop like that. I've never been taught leadership skills. She gets me. I totally want to be part of a group that's full of empowered women that are all learning. I would love to have that experience. There's a payment plan. I'm sure that if you are resourceful and driven and this is what you want we can find a way I always find a way so that's what happens for you when you sign up to join me you get coached in a small group forum you get lifelong membership to my area that has all of my lessons that I've developed over 30 years of leadership training you absolutely can be helped this absolutely is for you if these lessons have resonated for you if you have felt like you're nodding and you're like that is so me then the lessons that you can learn on the inside are also so for you you're worth it you are so worth of this type of investment if you feel like you're not sure about investing in yourself I just want to say there is nothing that you deserve more than peace and freedom and relief from the torment that we put ourselves through when we're stressed and feeding ourselves our bad beliefs when we're just always racing towards deadlines and not feeling empowered and calm and good and self-aware this is a solution that you want this is freedom when you have this you're happier life is easier you sleep better you are less stressed and you may even find that it it expands to other areas of your life as well because when one thing changes everything changes all right, ladies, I am here for you. If you're, if you're tired of going it alone, if you have felt sort of isolated in your leadership position, if you feel like you'd love to have a coach in your corner, that's the moment for you to book a call with me and see if this is right for you. It's not right for everybody, but even having a call with a coach like me to be able to find some clarity and see where you're at and what you're leaning into is extremely empowering. It's extremely transformational just to see where you're at. So this is the link again. It's www.joeleader.com forward slash apply. It, it, it's a very long website, but at the very top, you'll just see book a call to start now, which is how you get started. We get to meet in real life. Connection is everything. It's so important to me to feel who's on the other end of these trainings and hear from you what resonated, what you seek, where you're at, and if this program can help you. I know that you're not alone. I know that there are other women who are very similar to what you're experiencing, enjoying the, the camaraderie and the sisterhood of being in a network like we what we have in our small group coaching network. If you've been looking for this, if you've wondered about coaching, this could be for you. I could be your coach and it would be such an honor. Um, it absolutely lights me up to make these connections. I know that at the end of this weekend, some woman who was previously a stranger to me will become a cherished client and we will be in a special relationship of support and learning forever. Like once I'm your coach, I'm always your coach. So it's not an opportunity that you'd like to let slide. If you need leadership coaching, training support, if you want to understand your emotional environment and your distressing experience better in a way that has you not suffering and not struggling, if you need some more tactical tools and a framework for how to operate in your busy life, that's what Completely Confident Leadership is all about. You might even want to go on a retreat with us too. 
I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but every year I offer two leadership retreats for my clients. And right now we're actually putting together our July retreat to the San Juan Islands in Washington State, our November retreat to Zion National Park in Southern Utah. So there's nothing but good stuff here for you. It's a community like none other. And I invite you to find time on my calendar by going to www.joeleader.com forward slash apply. Find the button that says book a call now. You can totally afford it. If you're a working woman, if you have some savings, this is not crazy expensive. There are some programs out there that are up to $10,000 and I get it because they're so transformational. I'm putting it at a price point that I think any woman who is at a certain level, if she's a manager, if she's a director, if she's a VP, if she's a, you know, a project manager, if she's out there in the world making things happen, this is the type of investment that she can afford and, and it should be something that feels like, yeah, I want to put the money on me. I don't, this is why I do some training like this free but actually engaging and investing is a transformational action in and of itself right like there's one part of it that yes yes it's my business but the other part of it is it's a way of you putting all your chips on you and saying I am worth investing in me and my thoughts and my learning and my skills that that's what I want for me so I think that even that moment of when you decide to sign up is quite transformational. It's like, yeah, I'm going to do this. All right. So what do you need to know? It's everything that I can think of that a leader needs. It's a four month long deep dive curriculum with lifetime access to the lessons, weekly group coaching, a special Facebook community with empowered women that you have access to the hive mind. It's voice text walkie-talkie access to me throughout the course. It's a public speaking workshop inside the course. It's everything that you need to up-level your leadership skills, to drop the stress, and to feel like you're finding your way. You're finding your inner icon and letting her lead, not the struggle, strive, perfectionist, people-pleasing, stressed out version that we've been coping with. All right, ladies, it has been such a pleasure to have you in this three-day workshop. I'll keep this these videos live through the weekend. You have until Sunday night to book a call with me to get the $500 off and to get the special bonus of the hypnotherapy tape that was made just for our group called I Am Enough with instructions on how to use it. So let's get on a call together, meet each other, and see what's next. This comes with so much love. Have yourself a lovely weekend. Check out all of the videos and we'll see you on a call real soon. Bye for now.